Previously, I did some videos on um, things to look for when picking out a 3D printer as a beginner. And I did a video on specifics for this printer, the Monoprice Select Mini, and things that I thought made it a good beginner 3D printer. I did another video showing um, how to get this up and running, how to from right out of the box to get your first print going. And now I wanted to talk about things that I learned starting off, things I learned in the first few months of 3D printing and try to uh, tell you the points and quickly um, so you don't have to learn it by making mistakes and everything. I wanted to start with the concept of 3D printing. Um, <clears throat> you'll go online to places like Thingiverse and other websites and you'll get a 3D part and parts are drawn in 3D and it'll be saved. Think of that all the parts are saved as .stl. There's also uh, OBJ and um, AutoCAD will save it as DWG. So all these 3D parts are drawn in SolidWorks or AutoCAD or Google SketchUp and that's all they are. They're a 3D part and you have to somehow convert that 3D part into a format that your printer will read and that is G-code, dot G-code. And G-code is a script file. And if you look at it, it has an X and a Y and a Z and it, it tells the printhead where to go and how hot to be and um, the speed that it should go and retract and ex extrude and all sorts of stuff. But you have to somehow get from this 3D part to this line of code for your printer. And that's, you, you need to have that because you can't have Somebody can't say, hey, here's my G-code, because they have a different printer, and they're using different filament, and they want a different quality. So that's, you, you need a program, and that's where a slicer program comes in. That's in the middle between this 3D part and your G-code. The slicer program's in the middle. That's where you take this 3D part, and you're imparting it with information, and you're telling it how hot it needs to be, and how fast it needs to go, and whether you're extruding, and, and how, how fast the first layer, that's where you're telling it all this information, how big you know your print bed is going to be, and where to be, and you're placing that part on that print bed to tell the coordinates. So that's one of the huge things you have to learn, are the settings. And when you're starting off, it's so confusing, there's a million different settings, but I found the original Cura that comes with this printer, it's version 15.04.06, is a really good one to start off with because it's very simple. It doesn't have a million settings on it. It has the basic ones. And in those basic ones, and, and I'm gonna make a video um, where I go through and I'll show you my screenshots of um, on my computer, I'll show you everything I have set up and I'll talk about each specific one. But some, some big ones you not have to know when you're starting off is first temperature. Um, PLA is what you're probably gonna be printing with. And that typically prints between 190 and 210 and it'll say right on the filament. But you're constantly printing and tweaking. Is it, is it, too, is it oozing out um, everywhere? Or is it, is it not bonding? Are you not getting good bonding? If it's not bonding, you gotta up the temperature. If it's runny and squeezing out, you might have to lower it. Or if it's popping as it's coming out, you might have to lower the temperature. Another thing is print speed. Print speed is huge in quality. You could print it 60 millimeters a second, but you're probably gonna get bad quality, and when it comes to the edges, it's gonna, it's gonna be uh, rough at, on the edges. But for some parts, maybe you, d you don't care about quality. You want it to print fast. You want to be sitting there for three hours on a, a part. You don't care how it looks. So these are constantly things you're changing. But if you want a very detailed part, you might want to go at uh, 20 millimeters per second. And you might want that Z axis to jump up every 0.1 millimeter. Whereas if, if you want it to print quicker, you're not really concerned about quality, you can have it jump up 0.2 millimeters. Um, another thing you're constantly changing is in the settings is to try to get that part to adhere to the print bed. That's a huge thing when you're, when you're starting out is you want it to stick to that print bed. So maybe in the settings, you'll, you'll select uh, that first layer to print half speed. So if you're printing the part at 40 millimeters a second, which is a good baseline, you might want that first layer to print at 20. And um, if you're getting stringy lines over the print, you might have to change the retraction speed and the retraction distance. So it's extruding and retracting. You might have to constantly adjust that. And that that original cure program is good for starting off. Now, as you get more and more advanced and you start learning about all these different settings, that's when you can go to that Cura 2.3 program, which has, you can, you can go in the settings and select all these different 
uh, settings that you want to be able to tweak. You can also try a, a paid program called Simplify 3D, which uh, some people say they really like, and it produces good results, and there's pre-set up uh, settings for that, low, medium, and high quality. Um, there's Slicer, that's a program, and Kiss Slicer. All, some people have, oh, I like this, oh, I like that, oh, that produces good results for me. Ideally, they should be pretty much the same. They all have the same settings. You're all trying to impart information into that 3D printed part to, to produce the best printed results for your printer. And when you're starting off, you don't really know what they do. You don't know what retraction is or how to notice it or why you should change it. You want it set right. You want it set at 60 millimeters and uh, millimeters per second and six millimeter retraction. What does that mean? You don't know. Should it be higher or lower? You don't know. But I, after you do this more, you'll be able to look at a part and say, oh, I'm getting all these stringy lines or I'm getting these little blobs after each row. Oh, I might have to up the retraction. Or there's all sorts of, you know, all these different settings you'll eventually get into and tweak to get a good printed part. Um, and one of those is that first layer adhesion. You want it to stick to your print bed. And starting off with this printer, it's an aluminum print bed and you'll have white masking tape on there. And that's fine for about five or six prints. And when you uh, turn on your heated print bed, it'll start to bubble and you'll have to use that spatula thing and smooth it out. And eventually it goes bad and you have to rip it off and you have to put, what everyone puts down, is masking tape. And this is cheap Harbor Freight blue masking tape. I think it was two, three bucks or whatever it was. If you go to Lowe's and Home Depot, it's eight or nine bucks. And some people use that green frog tape. Um, I've had good results with this this has worked fine um, on top of that you just you you rip it off stick it down in two two to three rows and that last row will stick off the back and you just take scissors and cut it off and make sure it's flat and flush everywhere what people use and I found good results with that is acetone and acetone is what's in nail polish remover you can go to the dollar store get some acetone and get some cotton pads or you can use paper towels and you'll uh, get it wet and you'll after you put the masking tape on and after every print you'll try to clean it up with the spatula and you'll wipe this acetone everywhere to try to get other residue off or the waxy coating off that masking tape because it might bubble up you'll have to smooth it so you want a good uh, print bed surface to get a good adhesion of that first layer um, and masking tape is fine. Lots of people use it. Lots of people even put masking tape on a glass print bed because some printers come with a glass print bed. Um, I've uh, modified this printer to have a glass print bed because I've read people said that that gives you good results and it's easy to deal with. And it is, I, I use a glue stick. That's another uh, thing that I could not print without because it wouldn't adhere. I, PLA is fine. PLA with a heated print bed, it'll stick just fine. But when you get into PETG and some other materials, it won't stick. It'll start printing, and that filament will just start pulling up. So I use the Elmer's All-Purpose Glue Stick. So in Cura, I'll know how big the part is sitting on that virtual print bed. And before I print, I heat this print bed up to whatever, 50 degrees Celsius, and I rub this on there pretty liberally over the area where it's going to print. It'll be nice and hot and gooey when this printer bed's hot. And that really, really helps with that first layer adhesion. So if you're not getting your parts to stick or they're peeling up or during the printing process, some big flat areas start peeling up the edge, you, you should definitely try a glue stick because that really helps. Other people have said um, Aquanet hairspray. They'll take this glass bed off, clean it off with acetone, then they take a thin spray of hairspray and put it on there. And that works. And that works for some material. People who print with ABS, I have not done that, but people who print with ABS use a slurry where they'll take, I believe it's acetone, 10 parts of that and, and so many uh, parts of the ABS, they take little bits and they dissolve it in there and they wipe that slurry on and that helps it stick. So you're, you're constantly learning and seeing, is it sticking? Is this new material not sticking? What do I have to do? Let me try masking tape. Let me try acetone. Let me try uh, a glue stick. Um, let me try hairspray. So everyone has their own opinion on what works best for me I'm really enjoying the glue stick on the glass print bed it's easy to clean up it sticks well 
and I know if I don't put it, if I forget to put that glue stick down, I know it'll start printing and it'll peeling up. On top of that, I like to print with a brim. You you uh, specify that in the settings. That is an initial layer that's not part of the print. It prints around it, and you can specify the width of the brim. I like to print five or six rows, and that is so I can ensure that the extra extrusion is accurate by the time it starts printing. It'll start printing that brim first thing and I can get in there and see if it's not printing right and if it's not that's when we get into what tools to use and this is the tool I use the most. It's I think it's a medical type equipment it's some sort of tweezers but they're long and skinny and I can get in there and pull away filament that isn't stuck right or it's globbed up on the extruder tip or it's it's not it's it's stringy and it's hanging over it's not sticking I can get in there and I do that on the brim not the actual part so all so this printer it has a tendency to go down and it'll start printing that and it'll start globbing up or no filament will be coming out and that's when I'm you're always watching that first layer and you get in there up oh, it's globbing up oh, okay I pulled that off okay that um, it's almost there I pulled that off and then it starts printing right and sticking to the print bed and you're like okay I'm okay and you can watch it and if something goes wrong you can get in there and hopefully pull it off so you don't have to cancel the print start over heat everything up extrude and get everything going your con that first layer and those first few rows of the brim I can pull off so by the time it does print the actual part everything's good another thing that I use on almost every print I'm always printing upstairs it's dark at nighttime and I'm constantly using this little flashlight and I'm looking in there and on that first row I'm in there with the tweezers and I'm trying to see is it sticking nope I gotta pull it off and you definitely have to have a flashlight to get in there to see what you're doing and that's why I, I built an enclosure for this printer and I bought LED uh, strip ribbon lighting and I lined the enclosure everywhere with lighting because you need to be able to see what it's printing. If you have a big light or a desk lamp you can have right here that would be great to have uh, but I'm always you know it's 10 11 o'clock at night you're printing something is it printing right you get in there with the flashlight if you have to pull something off so it's, it's good to have a good flashlight. So beyond that, you're just constantly looking at your 3D printed part, adjusting the settings, adjusting the material to get a good first layer. And hopefully you're, you're slowly getting better and better and you're improving that saved file you're creating. You're constantly tweaking it with an updated uh, date or whatever. So it's better and better and you're getting better and better results. And you're, you're experimenting with new print beds like I said, I'll do a video on adding this glass print bed to this printer. I'm also going to try marble, and I have uh, a granite. I have a really smooth piece of granite tile. I'm going to see how that works because um, this this is just ordinary glass. People use borosilicate glass because it gets too hot. I've had fine with this, and it's super cheap. It's I got a big sheet for two bucks, whereas that uh, high temperature glass is twelve, twenty bucks. So experiment with different things. Try to get different parts. Uh, better quality parts printed and like I said I'm constantly improving on this I got rid of this arm and I I built a, a 90 degree arm where this can mount and I built an enclosure and all sorts of things it's it's more of a hobby and it's you're trying to get different stuff people have it as a profession but for me it's just a hobby and fun to try to print different things and uh, get better and better at what I print so let me know if you have any uh, specific things you've come up with and things you tools you use all the time um, these are just something that some of the things that I use and it doesn't come with a printer obviously and you got to learn how to use it um, but these are just ways to get better and better prints so let me know what you think and what you've been using so good luck well I hope you liked the video you just watched if you did feel free to subscribe by clicking the button on this side you can also check out all the videos I've done um, the playlist from things I've built things I've fixed, home repair, 3D printing. And on this side, you can check out a recommended video similar to the one you just watched. And as always, down in the description, I'll put a link to my blog, which has more pictures and more information about the video you just watched. Thanks.